Hey everyone, Mike here and welcome to my channel. If you're new to my channel, I basically have a Saturn Sky 2007 and I do a bunch of modifications to it and I show you what I'm doing and how you can do them as well. If you're not new to the channel, welcome back. I really appreciate it. And today is gonna actually be really cool. It's a mod that I've been wanting to do probably since the first, I don't know, month or so that I owned the car. But it's also been one of those mods that for some reason or another, it would always end up at the bottom of my list and it wouldn't happen, wouldn't happen. So let me go ahead and uh, show you what it's going to be. All right, now check this out. Oh, I'm messing with you. Actually, check this one out over here. That is basically the sweep light, and uh, it's offered online. I'll put a link below the um, in the description so you can check it out yourself. I already did the one side as you can see I just wanted to make sure I had the wiring set up because there's actually three wires you got to pick the right ones and I'll we'll make sure everything worked first and then I'm going to show you what I did so um, on the other side on the driver's side so uh, before I get started I'm going to go and show you what is actually included in the kit and then I'm going to actually do the installation so you can check it out yourself all right so here's basically what comes with the kit uh, you get the actual bulbs which are LED bulbs they'll actually be marked A and B I've already put these ones in on the other side, so that's why they're just empty, but it's very specific for which ones you put on uh, the A or B on the inside or the outside because the Saturn Sky has two bulbs and one is definitely going on the inside, one's going on the outside. If you have a uh, solstice, I think there's only one bulb, so you probably only get one bulb with the kit. They also give you a resistor. This thing's kind of big, but they give you a resistor and the reason you want to hook this up is what will happen is if uh, you don't have it, the, the turn signal is going to do what's called hyper flashing. So it's going to flash, 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 like really fast. And basically what's happening is when you have a normal uh, incandescent type bulb like this, these are the old bulb, um, it actually draws more power than the LED ones do. So the computer wants to see that extra power on there. If it doesn't, it thinks a bulb is out and it'll start doing the hyper flashing just kind of warning you that hey your, your bulb is out you gotta get a change in fact that's actually what happened to me one of my one of my rear t um, turn signal bulbs was out and i thought what a great time to get this kit because i gotta change the bulb anyway and take that all apart so that's probably that's pretty much why i bought this kit in the first place so anyway you get the two led bulbs and um, they're really easy to deal with it just plug them in just like your normal ones they also give you a few of these clips and what these are for is to tap in the wire of the um, resistor to the actual wires of the light. So uh, I'll kind of show you the detail on that once we get started, but what you really want to do is this wire has to be tapped into one of them and then the other wire has to be tapped into the other one on the actual light and this is the little contraption that does it, which is uh, very simple. You also get, if you want it, one of the little zip ties uh, as well if you need if you need it. And then you get the instructions too. So uh, there's not really much to this kit. It's actually pretty easy. The hardest part, I'll be honest, is, uh, and I'll, do, I'll show you whenever we start doing the actual installation, was dealing with the resistor. This thing is huge. And no matter what I did to try to get it installed under the, um, the actual light housing, I just couldn't do it. I mean, it fit under there, but when I try to put the light housing in, it just wouldn't uh, wouldn't go in all the way so I had to kind of do something different with this and I'll show you my installation I was told by other people that they were able to fit it under there I even talked to the manufacturer and he said we've done a, a bunch of them and, and they fit them under there if you guys are able to or if you've already done this and you were able to fit this under the light housing please let me know and I'll post you know make a post or do something or heck I might even change mine around if I if I have the time but uh, anyway, like I said, this is um, this is the hardest thing to deal with as far as the location, not actually how to set it up. It's very easy to set it up. So um, anyway, I'm rambling on. Let me go ahead and get started with this installation. The first thing we need to do to take the taillight out is to undo uh, these two little bolts here and here. They're on the top of the housing. And um, I'm not sure the exact millimeter size. I know eight millimeters too uh, too big, so it's probably a seven millimeter, which I don't have. But I do have a 9 30 second uh, socket and that actually fits so it's probably a seven millimeter I don't have one of those 9 30 second work so I'm gonna go ahead and unscrew those bolts and then it's actually kind of like there's a couple of pins that you got to kind of work with and, uh, and pop this whole thing out so let me go ahead and loosen this baby up all 
All right, now that the bolts are out, the only thing that's really holding the um, the light housing in there are there's actually two kind of posts um, that go into these little holes on the side. One that is there and one's kind of towards the bottom there. So you kind of basically have to pull up and out almost at the same time uh, to kind of disconnect it. So let me uh, go ahead and show you how that's done. Now, depending how long this has been in here, it, uh, it might be a little difficult and you can definitely tug on it. Um, you just want to watch this top plastic black piece. You don't want to pull too hard and it might crack that. So you kind of kind of kind of work it back and forth to try to get it to come out. So here's the one post that's there and then there's another one on this other side. So you're going to kind of work it around. Sometimes it can be a bear. This is usually the hardest one is the one that's down here to work with. There it is. Ooh. And these are like the posts that I'm talking about here. If I'm getting this on camera and then here. Okay, this is the housing. I have it sitting here upside down just so you can see it. But this is the, uh, the plug for the light. This is the cable that goes to the actual light into the housing. So you basically disconnect it by pushing this little tab and, um, and pulling it straight up. So let me go ahead and Put the camera back up on a little tripod here so I can do this because I'm probably going to need two hands. And there it is. There's the plug. And here's the plug hole, I guess. And uh, now we can just go ahead and set the actual housing aside. Now if you look at the directions, like I said, you have to pay attention to the A and the B. And you can see the B is going to be on the outside and the A is going to be on the inside whenever you uh, put the bulbs in. So. Uh, I'm going to pull the bulbs out of the housing and then I also got, I actually picked this up at Walmart, I, th there's also another little third bulb in there, a little side marker bulb that is either, I think it's also out and I'm going to replace it with this little LED one, it's a number 194 is the LED number, so I'm going to put this in there just so, I think once I add this and these two bulbs over here, I think my car is going to be officially 100% LED lights in every single bulb socket that's in there which is kind of cool so let me get the housing and i'm going to re replace these bulbs so here's that little side marker bulb that i was talking about and basically you just twist it one way or the other it could be a little tight because it's probably the original one that was been in there there we go pull it out and actually you can see this actually is kind of burnt out here oh oh great and now it broke on top of that All right, looks like I need to get some pliers to pull this thing out of there. So not only was it burned out, it was broken as well. So I got nice little charge of little pieces of glass here. But let me go and get some pliers and get this thing out of here. You know, I never know what's going to happen when I'm working on these videos. And of course, this wasn't expected. But actually, here it is. It actually came out. I feel like a surgeon. It came out pretty easily. Believe it or not, it's just uh, just the top broke off. So let me go and put this bulb in and a lot of times these are specific for which way you put it in so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna you know it's, it's gonna never really tell you at least I don't know how to put it in one way or the other and which one is correct so what I usually do is I just put it in and then I test it before I put everything together so that should just slide right in there there we go so there it is and I'm just going to go and connect it back up. And again, it can be a little tight. I'm 
And they don't give you a lot of room for your hands either. There he goes. Okay, it's in. Now for the other two, if you look at the if you look at the housing, this is the outside, and then this is the inside. If this was attached to the car. So again, we have to kind of look at the directions, and we can see that B is going to be going on the outside and A is going to be going on the inside. So this bulb here is going to be B and then this bulb here is going to be A. So let me go ahead and do these as well. Again, you just kind of turn it, pull it out. Again, this is going to be B. I just pull this out. You're not really supposed to touch these with your hand, but I'm not using it again anyway, so it doesn't really matter. This is B. And this, you really don't want to, in fact, let me go clean my hands because they're real dirty. Um, this, you really don't want to touch the LEDs or anything like that. So let me go clean my hands real quick, and I'll be right back. Actually, I was being kind of stupid. I cleaned my hands, but then I got to do this one as well. And my hands are probably going to get dirty again a little bit. Yes, of course. So just pull this bulb out. There we go. Set that aside. Okay, so when you're doing this at home, don't do what I do. Just pull them both off at the same time. That way you only have to clean your hands once. Now, I could have edited that out, but no, I left it in there. So I'm actually going to pull this one out. And like I said, it's pretty much the same as a normal bulb, except it has these LEDs. And they definitely say don't touch these LEDs. They're actually bent that way for a specific reason. So it's just a matter, I'm going to actually hold on to a cloth like this to put it in there. And it should just pop right in. Like so. Now these ones, I don't know if they have to go in a specific way. I put them in the other one. I either got really lucky and they just went in and they worked. Or, um, or you know, if I put them in the wrong way, one of them wouldn't have worked and I'd had to diagnose that. But uh, once that's in there, that's good. I take the one labeled A. Take it out. It snaps it right in, as you can see right there. And it's just a matter of putting them back in. Now if you look, I don't know if you can tell, there's three little tabs on here. One of them is actually bigger than the other two. And in the hole, the, where you put them in, one of the uh, two, one of the tabs is bigger as well. If you don't want to sit here all day figuring out why this won't work, just make sure you line up the bigger tab with the hole there. That'll save you a lot of time and effort. And it just slides right in that one, and then we'll take this one. Same thing. There's a bigger tab, fits into the bigger hole there. So just kind of push it in. turn it and we are good to go the bulbs are in and I'm probably just going to clean the back of this a little bit you can see it's it's kind of it's kind of nasty there so I'm going to just clean wipe this off a little bit and I'm also going to wipe off the back of um, the sky where this housing actually goes because that was all dirty and nasty too so let me get those uh, things cleaned up and then we'll go ahead and we'll start dealing with the wiring all right that's what I'm talking about look how nasty that is it's all dirty all that grime and everything I'm sure this thing's never been taken out of there. So I'm going to go wash this off, or clean it all out before I put the uh, work on the wiring and put the housing back in. So it'll be uh, nice and clean. So I got this all cleaned up nice. And before I go and start doing the wiring, I just kind of wanted to show you something. Here's, here's the resistor. And this is the back or the bottom part of our housing. And they say you could put this in there. But the only place I could find where to put it is like right here. Because as you're going to see in a second, we have to tap these wires into the plug. But no matter how I angle this on the other one, I could not, because this little angle right here, this little pointer, is a little bit higher than that post. And anytime I tried to push it in, it would, it would fit, but this post wouldn't go in all the way, and then there was a gap going around it and everything else. And then this side, I guess it'd be kind of the same thing. I mean, it doesn't really fit in here, anywhere out here. This thing is huge. So, um... If some of you are watching this video has already done this and you were able to hide this thing in the housing, please let me know where you put it. Cause just, I mean, I'm, I may or may not change mine, but just out of curiosity, I'd love to know where you put this thing. 
and you're still able to get that this housing put back in there properly so that being said is and the reason I bring this up is because normally what you would do is you would just tap these two wires into the plug uh, wires really simple and it is really simple but what I had to do is I'm going to actually tap in two other wires longer wires and send them out and then tap those wires into these ones instead so basically I'm just making these two wires from the resistor longer so I can run it out and into the uh, into the sky's trunk area so uh, that's why I brought this up but like I said if you actually were able to hide this thing under the housing somewhere please let me know where you put it and let me know how it fit and everything else because uh, I'm just curious okay so this is the plug that we're gonna have to tap into these wires right here and like I said uh, earlier I actually am going to run wires longer than what's on the resistor to get them out of this whole area. And what I did is I went to Walmart and I purchased some 16 gauge wire in their automotive department. And I cut two pieces here. I cut two pieces, a fairly decent length because uh, I'm not sure exactly how far I needed to go. So I went more than I needed. So I cut two pieces and what we're going to do is take these two wires and tap them into two of the three wires that are part of this plug. All right, so here's the plug. Here's the three wires. You'll see there's a, a black one, a yellow one, and a brown one. Now on the other side, they had a black one, a green one, and a brown one. So I'm going to assume that the yellow one is going to be similar to the, um, to the green one. In fact, it was, if I remember right, it was in the middle here. So the black one and the yellow one are the two that you have to tap into. The reason I know that is because I tapped them into the other two and it didn't work. So, um, so anyway, and the way you tap these in is you take this little blue clip and you'll see that it's already kind of open, but you want to open it up one more way. So it actually opens up even more and you'll see there's like a little well area here, a little opening. That's where you're going to put in the wire that's connected to the plug. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do that to the black one right here. Just kind of slide it in there. You can kind of see it there. That's kind of hard to see here. But anyway, the black one's in there. And then you take your other wire. Now if you're able to hide the resistor under here, you know, then you don't even need this other wire. You would just put the resistor's wire on there. But you'll see there's another hole on the side. And that one's going to slide in there as well. So it goes right in here, and they actually got some gooey stuff in there too. So you can kind of close the one, actually that just slipped out, but you can kind of close the one that keeps the black one in there, seals that up a little bit. And then this one, again, it's gonna go in here. And then I have to go get my pliers because I forgot them. So let me get those real quick. Okay, now you take your pliers and you just kind of push down on this metal piece there to kind of crimp and attach the uh, wires to each other and then you just close it up it just snaps into place so basically without actually cutting the wire well it cuts a little bit uh, it actually kind of connects this black wire with the other wire now we're going to do the same thing with the yellow one now, if you don't have a lot of room you can actually kind of slice this back I didn't want to do that I wanted to make sure that um, I don't like cutting into this because with my luck I would end up cutting the wire but um, anyway this should be good now like I said I'm going to do it with my other wire and the other clip as well oh, it's kind of hard. there we go and now it's clipped in I kind of had the camera in my way I couldn't see it myself and then I put this one the black one in all the way take my pliers and crimp it down like so. And maybe a little bit more. And it's clipped. All right. So now I got my two black wires right here that I'm going to run further into the back towards the trunk area uh, for that. Now, one of the problems, just to let you know, little thing that happened, when I was working with the other side, uh, it just wasn't, it was constantly hyper, um, 
hyper flashing like these weren't connected and what I found out was these actual clips what they do is they cut into the insulation all the way down to the wire and then the metal from the wire touches the other side so the metal from that wire touches so it's like a constant like contact with that little metal piece of metal in there well apparently that clip didn't get all the way through the insulation area so I thought so it wasn't making a contact with both wires so that was the problem so I'm hoping that this worked this time and uh, we'll be good to go so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna real briefly and simply attach the resistor to these two wires here plug it in just to make sure everything works okay and then if it does I'm gonna go ahead and solder the wires to the uh, to the resistor and mount it so I got the resist, uh, resistor hooked up as you can see here's one of the wires I kinda have it going around and I have it just kinda attached to the resistor and then the other wire of the resistor I have attached to the second wire that goes down to the plug and the nice thing about these resistors is it doesn't matter which one uh, you plug it it's not like a positive negative kind of thing either one will work on either side so I'm just gonna go and put a little bit of um, electric tape around these just to kind of keep them steady and make sure they don't touch anything I'm gonna just kind of temporarily put the housing back together and see if it works all right check this out it works and works well uh, let's check it out with the hazards that is pretty cool all right now I'm basically gonna go ahead and put this kind of back together I'm gonna solder these wires here here we go uh, this one right here and then the other one on the other wire I'm gonna solder those just to make sure they're nice and tight and I'm gonna run if you look actually I'm just gonna show you if you look right up here right there is the resistor for the other light. I basically ran the wires kind of coming through right in the bottom and I used some uh, 3M double sided pretty heavy duty double sided tape for that down there. Let me just see if I can light down there a little bit better. There we go. So there it is. There's a resistor there for the other side. Again I ran the wire over there you can see it kind of taped right there kind of runs down to there. So I'm going to do the same thing just basically going to take that wire uh, and just run it down through here to the um, to this side and double sided tape down there and that should be it. Okay I got the housing back in and got my resistor here and you can see I got it all taped up and kind of comes up from underneath of here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this 3M tape, double sided tape, it's actually kind of some thick stuff I don't even know where I got it. I had it around here for a while. And then I'm gonna mount it. I got this all cleaned up out here or cleaned up down here. And I'm gonna take this and I'm just gonna mount it down here. And this little bit of excess um, wire, I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, use one of those tie things and uh, put on this little pole. It's uh, this little piece of whatever that does. And it'll be a done project. Okay, everything's back in order. The housing's in. The little bolt screw things are in got my wire coming across tied down and that is mounted there and I actually kind of put them up against a little bit of that metal uh, to maybe keep them cool for you know as much as they can but being back here I can't imagine them I mean I know it's the trunk and it's a little warm but I think that most of these things get us like 100 degrees anyway so it's not that that hot to begin with but um, just having some airflow like this should keep them cool enough that they should be okay as opposed to being in the housing which I think would be make them even hotter being all enclosed like that so uh, I'm definitely going to be keeping an eye on them obviously making sure the tape is uh, keeping them down there they're not moving around and make sure they're staying cool enough and uh, hopefully that's it all right this project is done and those look pretty cool I wish I'd have done it earlier for some reason like I said before it always kind of was at the bottom of my list of mods that I wanted to do now that I see them, now that they're in, I really wish I'd done it earlier because they really look cool. And I think they look even better than the Mustangs turn signals. But that's just me. Uh, that being said, if you like this video, go ahead and smash that subscribe button, hit that like button, hit that little bell, and it'll notify you of any videos that I come up with in the future. I got more stuff that I'm going to be doing. And uh, some of it stuff is maintenance, and some of it is repairs, and some of it is uh, cool stuff like this. So again, that's it for now, and this video is over.